Hey, good day to you. This is Todd. I am a regular dude walking in the word. Hey, it's funny how um, uh, these episodes work out. I usually record before I go away, but this time I wasn't able to. Um, but today's episode right lined right up in line with what happened in my life today. Um, in today's episode, it's called The Finish Line. And I wasn't planning on all this stuff happening. It just kind of happened today. Um, today I did uh, a, a, a sprint. A short, it's a shorter distance um, race that takes me an hour and a half to almost two hours to do. Um, where you you run a short distance, you run a mile, then you bike 12, uh, 12 and a half miles, then you run uh, uh, 5K, three miles. And uh, when I uh, and then tomorrow I'm I'm doing the same race the same duathlon only the the distances are um two mile start 30 mile bike and then eight mile run after that um but today what happened was as i was doing the last run i was coming around i was in mile one and it's it's hot and i expect it'll be even hotter uh tomorrow and as i was coming around that that a uh, turn turn two it's on a nascar uh oval track and then there's a section of the road course we run also but the the banks are are, are up real high so naturally you're, you're not running up there on those high banks um, but you're running on the, the flat part and the flat part has a an apron that goes off it's called the apron uh, NASCAR calls it that and um, uh, we are running right on the edge of that and I was staying real close to that edge uh, you know trying to you know save my steps uh, by staying cl close to the edge and when I was running, I saw right ahead of me someone step on the edge there, and they fell and went down. And I thought, oh, man, that's terrible. And um, she got up and kind of shook herself off and, and uh, kept going. And I came about right to that same spot. And I fell also. I mean, it was just like, I thought, what? I, I've never fallen in a race like that. Um, and here I fell also in that, and it's just, it's, it, you don't really notice it on, if you're not looking down at the track, that, that gap that's, you know, that, that high difference. Uh, it's not maybe that high, but it's, it's a definite a difference in the track. And if you step on that, it uh, can really twist and uh, set you askew. And um, anyway, I shook myself off. I had blood, you know, coming down my legs and everything. And, uh running down all the way to, to my shoe uh, but I had two miles to go and I just stuck with it and um, and finished the race and then after after the race went over to the uh, medical tent and they uh, you know cleaned up my wounds and uh, and uh, I got my medal and, and so forth uh, but I, I finished the race and uh, you come across the finish line and they say oh and here comes Todd Stoltzfus from Sarasota, Florida, and you know, say a little bit about you as you come across the finish line. And it's something. It's it. It relates to what we're talking about t t today in, in this uh, in chapter thirty-four of Deuteronomy here. Um, and and I chose just to to finish the race, you know, and and, and run hard uh, to to finish that race, no matter what happened to me. I had that spill, uh, but I was still going uh, to finish uh, that race. And it was funny, after I was at the medical tent, then I saw another guy there, and he was, same thing happened to him. I said, do you go down and turn two? He goes, yep, turn two. Um, and then I, you know, after the race, there was another guy I saw, and like, same thing. So anyway, just kind of funny. This is dealing today, this is the last chapter of Deuteronomy. We're going to spend three episodes, actually, in this chapter, and it's only... 12 verses long, but there's a lot of good stuff in this chapter. And today we're talking really about the death of Moses. Death is a finish line for us, okay? Um, and it, it's, for me, it's just, um, it's really going to transition. Transition in, in the tri uh, triathlon and duathlon is where you go and you change, uh, you don't change clothes, you, you know, I'm wearing these uh, nasty clothes right now. Uh, but you go and you um, you keep the same clothes on in longer races you could change um, but you change your shoes and you get your bike and then when you come back off the bike you change your out of your bike shoes and take your helmet off and everything and then put on your running clothes and run okay so 
don't think of your death as the, it's the end of the race, okay? It, it is, uh, you know, here on earth, but it's more of a transition. We're transitioning, okay? Um, it's, it's not the end of the life. I'm going, uh, to, I'm just moving on to another stage of uh, the race. Uh, but the next stage is a whole lot easier, okay? And, and it's paradise, you know, it's heaven. So uh, it, it's not like, oh, I got to, you know, a even harder thing to do. No, it's I'm going to heaven. So it is like a finish line in that sense, all right? Deuteronomy 34 says this, Then Moses climbed Mount Nebo from the plains of Moab to the top of Pisgah across from the Jericho. There the land showed him the whole land from Gilead to Dan, all of Naphtali, the territory of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah, as far as the Mediterranean Sea, the Negev and the whole region from the Valley of Jericho, the city of Palms as far as Zor. Then the Lord said to him, this is the land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. When I said, I will give it to your descendants, I have let you see it with your eyes, but you will not cross over into it, okay? We had talked about that already. Je uh, Moses is not going into the promised land um, because of you know, him, him misrepresenting God, okay? Verse five, and Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in Moab, as the Lord said. He, was, he buried him in, the, in Moab, in the valley opposite Beth Peor, but to this day, no one knows where his grave is. Moses was 120 years old when he died. Yet his eyes were not weak, nor his strength gone. Okay, and keep in mind, he's the only one 120 years old. Uh, we've talked about this before. There was no one um, around that age because everyone else had died uh, because God had said, everyone's going to die uh, before they get to the promised land. And we, we talked about that back in Numbers and here in Deuteronomy. Uh, the, verse 8, the Israelites grieved for Moses in the plains of Moab for 30 days until the time of weeping and mourning was over. Now Joshua, son of Nun, was filled with the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him. So the Israelites listened to him and did what the Lord had commanded Moses. Since then, no prophet has risen in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face, who did all these signs and wonders. The Lord sent him to do in Egypt to Pharaoh and to all his officials, and to his whole land. For no one has ever shown the mighty power or performance, the awesome deeds that Moses did in the sight of Israel. Okay? So, the big takeaway from all this is Moses got to that finish line here, and I'm going to use this analogy of the finish line here. Moses got to that finish line, and I'm sure God said, welcome home, okay? Uh, come on in, you know? Uh, because... It, and he wasn't perfect, okay? He, he did a lot of, he did uh, some things wrong. Uh, it, the Bible doesn't say he did a whole lot of things wrong. Early on in his life when he was, um, you know, uh, before, uh, when he first left Egypt, he was, on, he was on his own mindset. But God brought him into the wilderness for 40 years to really kind of train him. So he had that wilderness experience. After that, he led the people of Israel, and he did things really flawlessly. He had that one hiccup where he misrepresented God, and his anger controlled him at that point. Um, and remember, he was supposed to not hit the rock uh, like he did the first time. He's supposed to just speak to the rock. And because he ended up hit, hitting the rock, being he misrepresented God, and God said, you're not coming into the promised land. Okay, but the thing is, he... He did see in, into the promised land, and later on when Jesus, you know, was here in the promised land, then um, he was there with Jesus too. Um, so I'm sure God was said, hey, welcome. I'm well pleased with you. And Moses knew where he was going, and uh, and he was prepared for that. When I got I got across that finish line today, I knew where I was going. I was going to, into, you know, I was going to the medical tent, and then I was going to go get some food and stuff, and then... Uh, come back to the hotel and, and so forth. You know, I knew where I was going. There was no surprise, okay? People today act like it's a big surprise, like, oh, I get to the finish line. wonder what's going to happen now, huh? No, the Bible clearly tells us what's going to happen. If I accept Jesus, I'm, I'm going to heaven, okay? If I don't, I'm on my way to hell, okay? And th that's the problem. People don't want to believe in hell and don't think God would send people to hell, even though they've chosen to go that way. Um, 
And so then they make up things like, oh, it's, you know, all kinds of goofy things. But there's only two options, okay? You know where you're going, and it's either heaven or hell, okay? And so I urge you to be prepared when you get to the finish line. And for me, when I get to the finish line, when I die, it'll be a joyful thing. I'm transitioning from one life to the other. That's a whole lot better, okay? So um, it's like, you know, I'm doing this run today, and you're sweating and, and, and nasty and everything. But uh, it's like you're transitioning into, um, into paradise where it's, you know, a banqueting table and, and everything's nice and, and so forth. He doesn't even compare. Uh, you can't even, uh, as much as our mind tries to comprehend it, it can't. It can't understand how great heaven is. Um, so anyway, be prepared uh, for your finish line. Let me pray with you. Lord God, I thank you for this time we can be together. I pray that we would be prepared for that finish line. We would accept you um, as our Lord and Savior, and we would walk with you um, all the rest of the days of our lives. And when that finish line comes for us, you would welcome us into your kingdom, saying, well done, good and faithful servant. Thanks, Lord, for taking care of us and watching us like you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I'm a regular dude walking in the Word, and I look forward to seeing you. Oh, we got two more episodes in this chapter, and then we will be done with Deuteronomy. All right, Lord's blessing. I'll see you tomorrow.